Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on TypeScript. My name is Dan and today I'm going to be showing you about object types and interfaces. When working in JavaScript, we're going to see object types um, a lot, pretty much everywhere. They're basically uh, key value stores. So in this case, we have my object and it's got a property called name and a value called Daniel. Oftentimes these will be primitive values. But we'll also see that you can have nested objects. So in TypeScript, this uh, the type of my object here is automatically inferred. But you can also speci uh, manually specify the type explicitly. After the colon, you'll use the, the curly brackets, and you'll say that the first property is going to have a name, and it's going to be string, and the age is going to be a number. What this allows us to do then is if we remove our data, we'll see that we're getting an error that says it's missing properties, right? It's missing name string and age number. We do our code completion here. We see we get uh, this IntelliSense that says, okay, it's gonna need age and need name. And then if I enter name, or excuse me, if I enter age, I'll get code completion for the remaining properties. It will also tell me if I am typing in a property wrong. It will tell me if I am misspelling one of these properties. So name does not exist type that we've specified. If I once again remove the inner data. Another thing about specifying our type for objects is you can use code completion to like add the missing properties. So it'll put in a bunch of defaults. And now we can enter information. This works really well if you have a very large list of properties. We can uh, quickly see another benefit of typing our objects like this. Uh, if we import this function that simulates uh, an API call, right, to get a list of users, we can then just ex what's available on this API. So get user list, we can call this. Actually, I want to const user list, get user list, and then we can look at the various properties that are on there, right? So if we hover over user list, we'll see it's a list of users, all right? So we can do, we can get the first user out of here. You might wanna have to check that this element is actually defined, but uh, so for first user, what are the properties on this user object, right? We've got code completion name, excuse me, age is optional, name is there, permissions, what's in this permissions object? Okay, it's got four different booleans for create, read, update, and delete. That's just an example of why these uh, typing these objects are pretty nice. So if we go back to our my object here, this user object, in fact, I'm gonna just call it my user. We can expand this with a nested object, okay? So what we've done here is uh, we have a, pro a property called permissions and inside it is another object definition. In this case, the series of four booleans. And then you'll see TypeScript is telling us that it's missing these values. If we want to, we can utilize quick fixes to add these missing properties. At least those sets at least that sets some default values. But at this point, you can see how it's getting a little unwieldy to read, right? You have this large object here that's just a type definition or a type annotation. And then here's the actual uh, code values. But in TypeScript, we've got a couple of ways to clean this up. And the ones you'll see are probably the interface keyword and then the type keyword. They are very similar. There are some nuanced differences. One line of thought is that you can just use interface until you need the type keyword. However, you can just as easily get by with always using the type keyword. And these days, there's not going to really be much of a functional difference at all. But I'll go ahead and show you what syntax looks like for both, because you'll see it in various code bases, use both. So what we were going to do here is extract this type definition, and then we can use the type keyword, and we can usually give types a, usually in capitals or cap words, and then we can paste our type definition here, and then we replace that with user. So now this is equivalent. We've just extracted out this type definition, and then here, uh, when you hover over my user, it's of type user, which we defined up here. And now we can use that type definition in other things like you could with a variable. For example, we could have a function called return user, you know, and when it's called, it's just going to return a user object. And then what we can do is see that TypeScript is going to tell us it's going to require name, and we get code completion for all these different things, right? So, right, there we go. So if you were using the interface keyword, the syntax would be very similar. You would just say interface user. You wouldn't have the equal sign, but all this stuff internal to, that would be the same. Now it's going to complain that there's a duplicate identifier. We'll just go ahead and comment this out. But then this is just as valid to use in the function return type and in this variable declaration. So if you're interested, you can look at the documentation or various, um, there's, um, Matt Podock has a great YouTube video explaining the difference and his recommendation. And from my experience, this works great. Just use type, try and put a link to that video in the description below. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up some of this code example stuff. Let's talk about optional types. So right now, for instance, all these types are required. So if I were to remove age, it's gonna yell at me, age is declared here. But if I want age to be optional, what I can do is give it the question mark after the property name. 
in the type interface, or excuse me, in the type definition. And now if I remove this, uh, TypeScript is fine with that, right? I don't have to specify age. This is not quite equivalent to saying it is number or undefined. For example, if I hover over this with the question mark, right, it'll say number or undefined. But if I remove the number, I say or undefined, this still wants me to be explicitly declaring age as undefined. So if you want the, if you want it to have to be explicitly typed as the undefined type, then you would use this. If you want it to be able to be left off, you use the question mark to make it optional. Optional is pretty nice when you have properties that you don't necessarily want to specify, but it does make it a little more difficult when you add, when you want to go and use the object. So if we make a function here at the bottom, how far are we from 100 years old? What we can do is we can take a user, right? So a user, a variable, or our, excuse me, our parameter user is of a type user, and it's going to return a number. And so we would want to subtract from 100, you know, our user, the one that could be a number. Ah, no, I'm sorry, I was incorrect. That was, it was not narrowing the suggestions based on this return type. It would let me do user.name. And now it's gonna flag this as incorrect because you can't have this subtraction operation between a number and in this case, a string. Um, now, if we do age, now this should be a number, but it can also be undefined. So it's telling you that it's possibly undefined, which means since this is optional, we now have to handle the case where it's undefined. So if user.age is undefined, just to be explicit, there's a couple of ways you can kind of write these. I can write this actually a little better and say, okay, so instead of here, the case where it's the correct data type, what we can do is we can return a some basic number. So what happens when it's undefined? Well, we'll just return zero. In this case, um, if we wanted to, we could just have it return, but then we'd have to modify our return type here for undefined, and then it's happy. But by the time it gets down here, it knows that age must be a number, right? So this is this is an example of doing a type check or narrowing. So here at the top, when we first use user.age, TypeScript is telling us it can be either a number or undefined. This is because we made it optional. So in this if statement, we're explicitly checking if it's undefined with this strict equality. There's other ways you can do this. Inside this if statement, TypeScript has narrowed this that it knows user.age must be undefined. And in this case, we're gonna re just return the function. And in order to do that, we had to say this function can return a number or the undefined value. Outside of this if statement, on this line, we can now use age as a number in arithmetic operations. And then TypeScript also shows us that it has to be a number. So this is this is type narrowing. These are sometimes called type guards or type checks. And this is one of the key reasons behind using TypeScript. So by taking the time to explicitly write what our data structure is supposed to look like, TypeScript will then force us to handle these different logical cases where the value might not be what we expect. So you'll be doing, a, you'll do a lot of checking of different types. This ensures your code can handle those um, unexpected or rare cases gracefully without running into runtime errors that will affect your users. So let's modify this function a little bit to do another way of doing a type check. Um, this is gonna be the type of operator. So the type of operator, instead of doing um, Boolean, well, instead of just checking the value here, well, we can we can do this a little different. Let's say we wanted to move, we want to flip this around. We want to do our, we want to make sure age is a number explicitly instead of undefined. Well, what we can do is we can say type of, okay, so that's a, JavaScript keyword. And then in JavaScript, the types are, they always return strings. In fact, if you hover over this error here, um, this type comparison can only be string, number, big integer, boolean, symbol, undefined, object, function, and I guess empty string. Or no, empty string is the value. So it's saying this value has no overlap with any of these options. And if you do code completion in here, you'll actually get assistance, just see the list of options. So in this case, number. So if user age is of type number, then we can use it as a number here. And then outside of this statement, look at user age, uh, it'll be undefined because it'll be the other option, right? So I think I'll end this video at that point. Uh, in the next video, I think I'll cover array types. I could add it to this one, but there might be some nuances there with arrays um, that are important. So, you know, then we can talk about object type, you know, the, the type of object with the curly brackets. There's also this capital O object type, and then there's this thing in TypeScript called a record. So 
those kind of are important to go over and might be of interest to talk about together. So I hope you'll join me for that one. If you're still watching, thank you so much. If you liked this video and thought it was helpful, go ahead and click the thumbs up. If you want me to make more of them, you can use you can click the subscribe button. Uh, if you want to know more about me and the work that I do or hire me for some project you have, uh, you can head over to ruggedsoftware.dev. So again, my name is Dan Hampton and thank you for watching.